I have known of Gwendolyn Brooks since the mid-50 when I was a kid in middle school. And Sister Effie was the one who introduced me to Gwendolyn Brooks. She was my middle school history teacher. I always loved her poetry. And when I went to college, I, I had read her poetry. Uh, but even before that, uh, there was an uh, artist uh, in Chicago, a recording artist. His name was Oscar Brown, Jr. And Oscar Brown, Jr. had taken verse, her verse to song. For instance, her song, uh, or her poem, I should say, Elegy. Uh, Elegy, he recorded it in song. And also, I loved her poem. The, her, the shortest poem that anyone probably could ever create was called, uh, I believe the title is We Real Cool. And, you know, of course, being an adolescent at the time, uh, when I first heard it, I thought, I like this poem. This poem speaks to me. It, it's, it talks about the hard scrabble difficulties of, of uh, a young black child, a young black man in particular, trying to uh, navigate the hard scrabble and difficulties of growing up in uh, a racist city at, like Chicago. So I, I, I got to know her work early on, then later on I read more of it in college, and then when I went to work for Johnson Publications and uh, worked for the various magazines, including Black World, it was called the Negro Digest when I started working there, and then as Negro fell out of favor, it became Black World. And I got to know her. I, I was on assignment to cover a lot of uh, poetry events around Chicago. There were many poetry festivals in Chicago. Haki Mahabuti was located there. Uh, his, formerly, his name was Don Lee. He taught at Northwestern. Uh, Lerone Bennett, who wrote before the Mayflower, uh, was very close to Gwendolyn Brooks, and he was an editor, a senior editor at Ebony at the time when I worked there. And, and later, after I left, he was there for a couple more decades. Also, um, uh, Hoyt Fuller, who was the editor of Black World, uh, would invite her to come by, or he would go to see her in her uh, home in Chicago. So I got to know Gwendolyn Brooks very well, not, not on a personal level, but as, uh, you know, I saw her a lot, and I just loved her as a person from afar, and I just loved her, her po poetry. I think that she's one of America's gifts. Gwendolyn Brooks. This is a poem titled, The Chicago Defender Sends a Man to Little Rock, Fall 1957. In Little Rock, the people bear babes and comb and part their hair and watch the want ads put repair to roof and latch. While wheat toss burns, a woman waters multiferns. Time upholds or overturns the many tight and small concerns. In Little Rock, the people sing Sunday hymns like anything. Through Sunday pomp and polishing. And after testament and tunes, some soft in Sunday afternoons with lemon tea and Lorna dunes. I forecast and I believe come Christmas little rock will cleave to Christmas tree and trifle Weave from laugh and tinsel, texture fast. In Little Rock is baseball, baccarol, that hotness in July. The uniform figures raw and implacable and not intellectual, batting the hotness or clawing the suffering dust, the open air concert on the special twilight green. 
When Beethoven is brutal or whispers to ladylike air. Blanket sitters are solemn as Johann troubles to lean to tell them what to mean. There is love, too, in Little Rock. Soft women softly opening themselves in kindness or pitying one's blindness, awaiting one's pleasure in azure. Glory with anguish rose at the root to wash away old semi-discomfitures. They reteach purple and unsullen blue. The wispy soils go, and uncertain half-havings have clarified to shores. In Little Rock they know not answering the telephone is a way of rejecting life that it is our business to be bothered, is our business to cherish bores or boredom, be polite to lies and love and many faceted fuzziness. I scratch my head, massage the hate I had, I blink across my prim and pencil pad. The saga I was sent for is not down, because there is a puzzle in this town. The biggest news I do not dare telegraph to the editor's chair. They are like little people everywhere. The angry editor would reply in hundred harrowings of why. And true, they are hurling spittle, rock, garbage, and fruit in Little Rock. And I saw a coiling storm a wreath on bright Madonnas and a seath of men harassing brownish girls. The bows and barrets in the curls and braids declined away from joy. I saw a bleeding brownish boy the lariat lynch wish I deplored. The loveliest lynchy was our Lord. <laughs>